Hey guys, it's Tom and welcome to today's video. I'm currently in Riga, Latvia and this is episode 4 of my tour or mini tour of the Baltic countries and Finland. If you haven't seen my first three episodes in this series. I did have two episodes in Lithuania and yesterday was my first impressions of Riga. Do check those out, there's a link popping up on your screen now. Today I'm gonna try as much as I can to fit in a lot of sightseeing in Riga. Riga is one of the biggest cities here in the Baltic countries and I'm kind of wishing I had an extra day here because there's so much to see. But on the other hand, I've got the rain against me. It's supposed to be raining this afternoon. So I'm gonna try my best to squeeze in as much as I can for the first half of the day and I've got a backup plan to in case it does start raining but we need to run down to the meeting point in old city Riga where we're gonna take a free walking tour so we can get a quick crash course on the history of old town Riga <laughs> So I've just finished the Riga free walking tour, which was pretty cool. It's always nice to do these free walking tours when you go to any European city. It gives you a good crash course of the city and country that you're in. And the Riga free tour, just type it in on Google Maps, Riga free tour, and it'll show you where the meeting point is, which is right in Old Town City. Also, there's one at 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and 3 p.m. So make sure you choose the right tour that you want to do. There's an old city one, there's an alternative tour. So it depends on what you want to get out of your day of sightseeing here in Riga. So now I'm gonna walk around the old city myself and take a closer look because the walking tour is just a crash course and you don't really get to go inside. When you do the walking tour make sure you give a tip they're very very good. So let's go and take a look around old city and uh, dive more into what Riga is all about. <laughs> A landmark here in Old Town City, Riga, is the House of the Blackers right behind me. This was erected in the 14th century and it housed kind of like the Guild of the Blackheads or the Brothers of the Blackheads, which is kind of like a union for unmarried merchants and foreigners in Riga during the time. It was completely destroyed by the Germans in 1941. However, the new government did rebuild it from 95 to 99, so it was completely finished renovation in 99. So as you can see, it looks like it's really old, but it's actually not. It was finished in 99, but I'm curious to see what's inside. Let's check out the House of the Blackheads. Okay, so it costs six euros to get in, three euros for students and seniors. So let's just take a quick look around the House of the Blackheads. It's pretty cool so far.
not sure if you can see in the reflection, but right in front of me is St. Peter's Church here in Riga, Old Town. There's a surprise inside, apparently you get some amazing views in there. But its history, its first record of it being mentioned was in 1209, and throughout the years it's been <laughs> Burned, it's gone through fires, a lightning strike, it's gone through world wars. To actually see it standing here is amazing. And I can't wait to go inside. It's a evangelical Lutheran church. So let's take a closer look at St. Peter's Church. Euro if you just want to go into the whole section right behind me. But I wanted to check out the tower to get some nice views of the city, which cost me nine euros. So I think it's worth it. So let's take a look inside, check out the hall, and we'll go up the tower. to get the ticket for the tower, 9 euros, well worth it, amazing experiences up here, 360 degree views of the entire city skyline of Riga. You gotta walk up three flights of stairs to get to the elevators which is nothing because once you get up here you forget about that, but definitely worth it. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Just about to go inside the Riga Cathedral, which is just behind me. This is a massive cathedral and it was built in the early 1200s in about 1209 or 1211, if I'm not mistaken. And it's gone through a lot of, say, cosmetic facelifts, if I can say that. Of course, an old building such as this has to go through a lot of restoration. But the most recent being in 2011, 2015, where they changed some of the copper work on the clock tower just above me. So this is an evangelical Lutheran church. Let's go inside, I'm really excited, and check out more about the Riga Cathedral. So I'm just about to go in, I got my ticket. It costs five euros to get in three for children, 11 to 18. Children under 10 are free. So I just feel like I'm paying entrances for everything here, but nevertheless, these places are beautiful. So let's take a look around.
Riga Cathedral, definitely one of the stunning landmarks here in Riga. Definitely worth a visit. Only five euros. Come inside the outside section. is really beautiful. You've got a direct view of the clock tower right in front of you. Definitely worth it. Just gotta love Riga, old city. I love getting lost in these little alleyways. They're super cute. So I'm gonna walk around and explore some more. But on another note, I told you this in Vilnius, but in Riga, 76 cents for a San Pellegrino. One euro in Vilnius, 76 cents here. I'm not gonna run out of sparkling water. Amazing. <laughs> We're inside Riga Central Market now. I was really curious to come here because this is actually one of Europe's largest markets or bazaars, which is amazing. And also this was put inside old aircraft hangars, the German hangars that were left here. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like. It looks super cool, lots of light coming in. And there's so much different things. So you can get fresh produce, fruits, vegetables, fish, meats. And there's also a new food court area that's super popular here at the moment. You can get clothes too. There's absolutely everything under here. Yeah, a lot of the locals are here too. So let's take a closer look around Riga Central Market. Of course, I had to get a few street snacks for you guys to try Latvian street snacks. So I went to the bake shop or pastry shop right behind me here in the food court section of the central market and I told the sales lady, give me anything Latvian, I want to try anything local. She couldn't speak English too well, but she gave me three of the top picks that the Latvians or the locals always buy when they come to the central market. The total of everything was super inexpensive, one euro 46 for three items. It's usually about three euro each if you go anywhere else in Europe or even up to five euros for one of these items each but I got them all together for 146 now that's a steal these are huge portions so I'm gonna take a bite out of each just to show you guys and get a feel of what Latvian pastries or cookies are but she couldn't really tell me a lot of the ingredients so I'll try my best to do some research during editing and I'll put it in the subtitle right below here but let's start with the first pick she chose this straight away she almost lunged at it to give it to me because she wanted me to try it so it looks pretty much like a cookie and she said it's got raisins and nuts in it so let's give it a give it a whirl mm. that's really good I was expecting it to be really sweet but it's not it's like a soft baked cookie love this one you can probably eat a few of these if you're really hungry let's go on to the next one she shows this one it's like a cute little tart keeps on breaking on me this looks like it's got walnuts in it and she told me it's pretty popular here too so maybe they have a thing for walnuts I'm not sure so let's dive into this it looks like it's got a bit of like a sweet syrup or something on top of this tart let's try it I can't quite put my finger on what's the inside here. I think it's caramel. They don't really taste too much. But yeah, walnut, tart base, and caramel on the inside. 
Yum, I love this one. Super sweet, but I love it. Let's go on to the next one. It's kind of a wild card. I asked her for one more thing. And she showed me this, and she couldn't tell me what was inside it. She didn't know the English word. But nevertheless, I'll research it. Even I can't tell what's inside this. It looks like apple or something, but let's try. That's really delicious actually. It's kind of like an apple strudel almost, like an apple pie. And I love it because it's not too sweet. It's got a bit of the, the cinnamon in there. And I really love it because it's not too sweet because sometimes people love to overdo it and put a lot of sugar in it just to make it taste better. But I love how the flavor of the apple just shine through here. So love, love, love. I hope you guys liked my little Latvian sweet journey here in Riga Central Market. So anyway, I think we should head back to Old Town, explore a little bit more and let's look for somewhere nice to eat some really authentic Latvian food. So let's get walking. So, key to Riga restaurant, this was the restaurant that I selected to have some very local Latvian food and it's right across from the Riga Cathedral. The waiter here was really nice enough to let me try the balsam, a local kind of Jägermeister or alcohol type of thing. So I'm going to try these for you, I'm, not, I'm just going to take a sip because I need to be able to walk back to my hotel later. <laughs> so this is the classic one. Just from smelling it, you can already smell that it's very herby, like a lot of herbs and medicinal kind of smell, just like Jägermeister. Let's try it. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, that was <laughs> powerful. I need to have my chaser now, so my Aperol Spritz. Delish, can't get over apple spritz. This is the lighter version, which is the black currant balsam. This came out recently in the last few years, become a really popular drink, and it's called a girly drink somehow, maybe because I don't know, it's got less alcohol and they call it girly, which for me doesn't really make sense. But anyway, let's try it. I prefer this one. This would probably be really, really nice in a cocktail, maybe with tonic water, soda water, or Sprite. But I definitely prefer the black currant balsam called Miguelie, but hey, I love um, something a little bit lighter. So there you go, guys. Make sure that when you're in Riga to try the local balsam or their version of Jägermeister. <laughs> So I finally got my order for tonight. Now I decided to get two starters instead of a main because I wasn't too hungry. Garlic bread, we all know about it around the world, but in Latvia, it's made with rye bread. So it's a dark bread. And this version comes with a cheese sauce. Cheese, amazing, goes well with anything. And this is a hot cheese sauce. So this was actually a suggestion from a friend of mine. He used to stay here for a couple of months and always had this as a starter. So I definitely wanted to try that. And then second, Secondly, I got the grey peas. I've never heard of grey peas before. I don't think we've got it in Australia. But this version is very simple. It comes with onion and bacon. Bacon, I love bacon. Peas, well, we'll see how it is, but still I wanted to try it. And it comes with sour cream. So this is a very traditional Latvian starter. You can see it in any restaurant here in Riga. So I was really curious to try it. I think both of these things will definitely fill me up. I'm not too hungry. Let's see with the taste of it. I'm super curious. I kind of don't know where to start with this garlic bread. It's a lot and it's really really heavy to be honest. You can smell the garlic, beautiful, and I guess we'll just dig in, see what it's like. Let's do a close-up of it. I don't know, I feel like this garlic bread is almost fried. It has that consistency that it's really crunchy, but I'm pretty sure it's been put in the oven. I'll try it without the cheese first because that's how it's traditionally made. Beautiful. 
I've had rye bread before, but I never knew that you could make it into a garlic bread. It's absolutely amazing. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm, garlic and cheese. Super yum. I can smell it. Hang on a minute. Seriously. This is my new favorite starter dish. I wish I had it in other parts in the world. Maybe I'll even try and make it myself at home. But definitely a hit. Six euros fifty. A little bit dear, but you know, I'm right in the city center old town of Riga, so the restaurants here are a little bit more dear because of the location. Definitely a yum, yum, yum. For the garlic bread here, so let's go on to our next one. The grey peas. I'm not quite sure what to think yet, but to be honest, I love anything with bacon. Peas, okay, my mum used to make me eat it, but grey ones? I don't know, I've never really heard about it too much, but apparently it's just grey peas that have been boiled for a while, and then they've been mixed with onions and bacon, so I think that'll have a really complex flavour in there, hopefully. So the grey peas almost look like lentils to me. Growing up with Filipino food, we have this dish that's kind of like a green bean and it's served with pork, so maybe this is something very similar. Can't wait to try it. Okay. <laughs> I had it just plain without the sour cream because I wanted to get what the flavour was. So the grey peas don't really have too much flavour and that's why they put the bacon on it because the bacon is super salty. So they kind of balance each other out and the onions have a really nice background flavour to the entire dish. But let's try it with the sour cream because that's how it's supposed to be eaten normally. A little bit of sour cream I guess on it. <laughs> Amazing. It's funny how they consider both of these dishes starters for me. This would be a main course already just for one dish. In Australia we kind of have these types of portions as our main courses. But I was really happy that I came here because I got to try two very very local Latvian dishes. So when you come to Riga make sure you go to the Old Town to have something to eat. I know that they're kind of touristy restaurants but hey if you want something very local come to any of the restaurants in Old City. If you have a bit of a budget it, then go to where I went last night at Lido. You'll find any Lido restaurants crawled around Riga. So you'll have more options to look there. However, you won't have the luxury of asking the waiter what you can eat at a Lido restaurant because it's self-service. But anyway, let me finish my dinner. Let me finish my Aperol spritz. It's not two for one today. And then I'll have a chat to you when we get back to the hotel for my final thoughts about Riga Latvia. Where does a dog go coin the rain? Luckily, it's at the end of the day. So we got to do everything we needed to do in Riga today. Okay, back to the room. I'm finally drying off a little bit. I got caught in the rain in the end, so the rain did pour down. Can I just say that I finally gotten in the mood? I know it's episode four already, but you know that from episode one, I just came from work and my first two to three days, I kind of had work brain. I was just annoyed with some things that happened at work and I finally got that out of my mind. I had a bit of a breakthrough today and I really just started enjoying myself and being in the moment. And that's the best tip I can give you that in each country and city that you're in, be in the moment, sit there, absorb everything around you, absorb the culture, absorb the people, just be thankful that you're in a place that you've never been to before. So that finally hit me today and I'm super happy that it finally did because I was waiting for that moment so I can really enjoy these whole 9 to 10 days. Let's get into my final thoughts about Riga. <laughs> Sorry about the little segue there but I just wanted to put that in there because I'm finally back to my old self and enjoying. So finally Final thoughts of Riga. First of all, what did you think about today? I felt like I did a lot. I felt like 
I paid a lot, but in the end it wasn't too much. I got to do the main sightseeing in Riga, which I'm happy about. Final thoughts. Well, yesterday I kind of told you my first impressions about the people here, and it kind of changed when I was in Old City, and maybe they're a little bit different in the Old City because they cater more to the tourists, so they're a bit more patient. They say their please and thank yous and ask how your day is and stuff. So I kind of appreciated that there, but I kind of wish it was just a bit more consistent because because it's not even about hospitality or service, it's just about being a nice person in the end. I don't think that that should be a hard thing to do, especially when someone's nice to you. It's just courteous and respectful to be nice back to them. Friendlier locals in Old City. Next, now I love using my card, I hate bringing cash around, so I love it how the system in Lithuania and in Latvia, I forgot to mention this in my vlog about Vilnius, is that you can just tap your card everywhere. I bought my sparkling water for 79 cents or however many cents it was, and it was only just one item. Sorry, I'll turn my phone off. <laughs> it was just one item for 70 something cents and I was able to tap my card and that's actually really good because in some places you need a minimum purchase and da 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 da. So it was really good that I can just tap my card for really small purchases and not really have to use my pin there. So I really enjoyed that. Also, walking around Old Town, everything is accessible. It's like what they did with Riga was they compacted all of the sightseeing in one place. And from a tourist perspective, that's amazing. There are some other sites that are on the outskirts of Riga that I didn't really have time to go to, which brings me on to my next point, is that if you want to fully experience Riga, you need up to three days for that. I was only here for one and a half days. So if you want to really Really fully experience that then I suggest a good three days and you can break it up into different sections or different parts of the city because Riga is the biggest city compared to Tallinn and Vilnius for the Baltic countries. You can try to go to Dramala Beach. Everyone's been telling me to go there but I just didn't really have the time. I need to be in the mood to go to the beach and for this trip I'm kind of like in this amazing race mood where I'm just jumping to different countries every two to three days. So the beach for me is just I just need to be in that mood mood of like, okay, I'm gonna be just lying down and relaxing for the next 5-10 days or however long it's gonna be. So I wasn't really in that mood today. But yeah, definitely go down to Dramala Beach. It's a really popular beach that all the locals and tourists go to and they have a lot of boats that go from just outside of Old City if you need to get there or you can just take a taxi or a bus to get there. Also, relatively inexpensive. As usual, as I mentioned yesterday, very consistent with Vilnius with regards to the prices. In some aspects, it may be a little bit more expensive than Vilnius because when I had dinner in the old town, I mean, the old town is targeted for tourists. So you're going to be expecting to be paying a lot more there compared to eating in say Lido where I ate last night. In the old city, an old city center, if you go to any restaurant there, regardless if you're having a drink or something to eat, it's always probably going going to be double the price. You'll be seeing main courses up to 26 euros or 20 euros, which is at par in Germany and other European countries, where if you go to Lido, you can get a main course for six euros or even five euros to make those choices. I specifically went to a touristy trap kind of restaurant because I wanted to see how they were. They all speak English perfectly and they make good recommendations there, unlike in Lido where it's self-service. So there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video that was Riga in a day. I can't believe I did it. I went to the to the major sites. I got some tips from a lot of you guys on Instagram. So let's connect on my social media. I'm very active on Instagram. I ask a lot of questions to you guys there. So do head over and let's connect on Instagram. I've also got a Facebook page, but Instagram's better because I check that regularly. Also, if you do have any tips for Riga, comment below, right down here, and let's tell the community what else you can do in Riga other than the things that I did or if you have any corrections from what I did today. I can't wait for episode 5 tomorrow. Wow, we're halfway. Tomorrow is going to be halfway through my trip because we're going to Tallinn in Estonia. So I hope there's no drama for my flight tomorrow. I'm on standby once again, but stay tuned for episode five. It's coming up straight after this, where I'm going to be giving you my first impressions of Tallinn, Estonia. So let's hope the rain's not there too. <laughs> so other than that, always take care and I'll see you tomorrow.